Hello, back with a second video for the Asteroid Redirection Mission. This is my second rocket. Based off of my last one, it's a gigantic improvement. Um, I've managed to improve the um, amount of fuel in the top section. I've made it so there are multiple stages of removal for the top section, so I can drop off multiple parts and the bottom section I've worked it with a bit of um, creative building with the uh, the tanks so that the six outside um, booster rockets will expire at around the same time that the first two engines pack out as well. I tried it with just the six engines but they um, they last quite a lot longer. So what I've done is I've stuck a fairly small fuel tank on top of each of the six boosters and I've fed them all into the first rocket engine which is of course feeding all the other ones. And that buys it just about the right time. In a moment that section is going to drop off and then we'll uh, proceed. This video doesn't actually show me intercepting any asteroids, this is just showing you the uh, rocket that I'm going to be using. On the top section, them two large outside engines can actually detach and they have their own modules on there, or probe modules, so they're actually able to be controlled remotely, um, so they can attach to asteroids and then, of course, push it back themselves. I'm quite proud of that, actually, because they look pretty cool. Just uh, a big tank with four engines. And as I stated in my previous video, now they've uh, up and off the, 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 the update they've done so that anything that's attached to the asteroid has the ability to share fuel, electricity, and everything else with anything else that's attached to it which is amazing because now you can essentially just drag it into orbit of a planet and use it as a docking station and use the claws to dock rather than um, actual docking ports which is obviously a lot easier. Now you can see the outside lots all dropped off. A little while back it uh, certainly looks a bit better now. That first stage, if you didn't notice it, was using about 1,000 units of liquid fuel every second. So, it, it's pretty hefty. I'm loving the new design. These new huge um, fuel tanks are amazing. I've, I've definitely got to give a, a big um, thank you to the guys at KSP for doing this, because it, it's definitely made getting these huge rockets into orbit a lot easier. I've updated the two little escape pods as well. They're now uh, actual liquid fuel powered rather than uh, ion powered. Obviously you don't get quite the same distance but it's a hell of a lot quicker. And I shouldn't need that much distance. And There we go, that's the last one dropped off. I do notice with this rocket design that it does start to spin on the ascent but it does stay fairly straight um, so it's not a problem. Once I get to this point, I can get it back under control. Start tipping it towards the uh, the, the, the 50 degree-ish mark. So I can start getting my orbit aligned. Or circularized, should I say. And um, yeah, that's it. It's just a case of leave it there and wait. Yep, this is uh, about an hour of designing. I played around with it a bit, tried to see just how much fuel I could stick on that top section while enabling it to uh, be stage separatable. By that I mean I can drop bits off once the fuel runs out. Obviously the first bit that can drop off once it's empty is that centre engine with the two large fuel tanks attached to it. There's a decoupler that drops that section off once it's out of fuel. Um, then you've got the second large fuel tank and me medium fuel tank just above that they can both drop off 
leaving just the tiny, um, well I say tiny, but it's the smallest of the new large fuel tanks, um, which is connected to two of the small, small fuel tanks with the nuclear engines on it. And then attached to each of those is of course them two big outside ones, which can either stay attached if I need them to, um, or they can detach and be like um, independent asteroid uh, redirectors. Of course, because they're using nuclear fuels, they've got even just with that one large fuel tank. You know that that's a good amount of uh, thrust they've got. Wouldn't be enough to capture an E-class like in my other video, but I reckon you can probably quite easily get um, a C up to a C-class with it, unless of course it's coming to like 150,000 periaps naturally again. Then you can probably catch a D or E-class without too much problem. Yep, the final um, stage separation is about to happen now. Drop off them final two fuel tanks on the outside. And all the nuclear engines activate as well. They're there, so I might as well use them now that the fuel tanks aren't in the way of the thrust. And now it's just a matter of waiting for the um, circularization. Get the orbit and then that's it job done. The nuclear engines do get to about 98% overheat at maximum thrust now when there's four of them all together anyway. So uh, I have to I have to lower my thrust to like about 95% otherwise there's a chance they might overheat and I don't want to take that chance. And now it's just the boring weight for that blue line to uh, go into a complete circle. I'm not sure what improvements I could make to this. I'm going to be doing a bit of uh, testing. I just wanted to put this design out there. I'm sure people can make use of it if they wanted to um, try to capture any of the larger asteroids or even just get like a huge multi-stage orbiter. I mean, it's got two escape pods and then two independent little, um, well, I don't know, you can use them for whatever you want, but they're generally used for redirecting asteroids. Stick them into the side. I wonder if you could catch two at once with this ship. Could be quite, quite interesting. I'm considering sticking a couple of ion engines onto the sides of each of those things, just to make it even more efficient. As you can see, all that stuff I've got in orbit. Yep, there's a hell of a lot of stuff. Quite a few of those are actually space planes. I built a fairly small space plane that was able to, to get up into orbit. I took it to um, Duna. It had just enough fuel uh, to reach Duna. But, um, yeah. I, I realised once I got there that the bit of liquid fuel I had remaining... There was no oxygen in Duna, so I couldn't uh, fly. I think it was Duna. No, it was Eve. Yeah, Eve. I tried Duna. I got to Duna, but I couldn't slow down. But Eve, obviously, it slows you naturally quite uh, a lot. And I was able to land the plane without um, any problems. Didn't need any... Um, deceleration at all, it's all just the atmosphere. Yep, yeah, as you can see here, I'm about to just uh, pump the fuel into the top. Just need to do this. I don't need to do this now, but just uh, showing. Once the fuel's all into the top section, then um, When that bottom bit's empty, you can drop it off, and then of course you get slightly better um, distance for your fuel. Practically there now. Can um, can sort of just sit here and await the uh, 
arrival of the Apoapsis. Oh well. I've been watching too much 8 out of 10 Cat Stars Countdown. Oh, oh, there it is. And now to wait for it to be over 70,000 and that's it. Job done. Still got plenty of fuel left. Well over 20,000. Just think, if I can get that asteroid into a very close orbit around Kerbin of about 150,000 all the way around, rather than 150 one side and about 50 million the other, then I'll be able to dock tons of stuff on there and that would be a really good and a really efficient refueling station. Just grab on, drain the fuel and off you go to the next uh, planet. And that's about it. Nice and easy. 21,135 units of liquid fuel left. Give you a look at the ship as it stands. You've got the two escape pods just on the outside there. For um, the Kerbins that are on the asteroid, they can obviously jump out um, of their current ship, jump in and fly back if need be. It's always good to have a couple. Then you've got the two outside pods, the two inside engines, and that centre stack which will be slowly dropped off. And then of course the very, very centre top pod which can detach from the whole thing. I try to stick as many of these little stages as I can in. I like to have um, different options open. So I'm ready for any contingency that may arise. It's um, got plenty of everything. But yep, now to show you the uh, the drop off of the um, outside pod. Just uh, decouple this from the outside, and then you'll be able to see it in action. But I hope you've enjoyed the um, demonstration of my ship. I know it's been a little drawn out, but I wanted to do this in real time. So you could see it as it is. As always, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And here we go. Nuclear engines activate. I should probably stick some RCS on there. But apart from that, here we go. Thanks for watching, guys.